Hey guys, it's me. I'm back. Hey guys, today we're gonna to be covering a line loop alternative in B1L. I've talked a little bit before about how I don't like to use line loops. I think they're a bit clunky and they require you to use many universal function macros all linked together. They're hard to migrate. And instead of doing that, you can use a dynamic syntax while loop in a macro universal function and you could do basically the same stuff and it's a lot easier to control and you can do uh, different things. So I'm gonna give you an introduction to that. Let's go. My name is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. I make videos about SAP Business One. If you appreciate this video, I'm asking that we get one thank you. I just enabled super thanks below. If I get one thank you, I will continue to make videos. I've been wrestling with whether I should just work more hours at work or make videos. And I just haven't really been motivated to make videos lately. So I really appreciate all the feedback and the people I've talked to. Connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a message. I really appreciate it. So I'll do periodic videos. I'm just not committing to them every week. So the first thing we have to do obviously is log in. You can see my b one up dashboards. I'm gonna do an example on the credit memos today where you can automatically check the box for without quantity posting um, just with the click of a button. So a lot of people want to check that box and um, they'll use it for if you're gonna do a credit, you wanna use the item type, but you don't want any inventory to come back. So this will just loop through the rows and it will conditionally set the specific flag for the quantity or without quantity posting. So I'll pick the first customer. This pops up this little box, it's just a customization. I'll pick a couple items. So I picked a couple of items here and, and why I picked uh, these three is the third one is a service and you'd see if I try to click this without posting, it says you can't because it is a non-inventory item. So if you're gonna do an automation, you have to conditionally select this. So to do this with a line loop is, it's not difficult, it just has a lot of steps to it. If you understand the while loop framework, it's really easy and you can use it for whatever you want. And it's, again, it's more, uh, I think it's more customizable. You can do literally anything you want. You can go up and down, down to up. I haven't seen a limitation yet that I can't do. So you really wanna check those two and leave that third one. So we're gonna go to without quantity posting and that's the button down there. So I'll show you how it works first. We'll just click it. It loops through there. You can see it process the three and it checked those two. So I'll show you how it works. I just made a button on the bottom. You can make a function button. That's cool too. It's whatever, you, however you want to trigger it. I, I don't love to do line loops automatically. I think it makes users mad. And especially if you have like a hundred or 200 lines, you're going to cause massive slowdown. So anytime I can avoid looping in favor of like a post transaction notification, I will. I just really try to avoid it. If I have to use it, I'll use something like this. I don't think it's dramatically faster, but it feels faster to me. So um, we're gonna go here. So this button, you should know how to do this by now. If, you're, if you don't know how to do uh, validation and clicking the button, um, you should kind of step back and just look at B1 validation configurations. So this basically just, when you click this button, which is the item boy X 23, item pressed, it just runs this particular universal function, no conditions here. Okay, so I'll pop open this universal function. I'll throw this code down in the video description too so you can use it. So let's make this a bit wider and we'll take a closer look at what we're doing here. So this is a regular universal function macro. So instead of doing a line loop type, we're just gonna do it this way. So we go and we store one, which is just a counter, assuming we wanna start at one. We go store two, line count of the 38 matrix. So if you go to view, system information, and you hold your mouse over that matrix, matrix you're gonna see it's item 38, which is common for all the marketing documents. You could do this for any matrix of whatever. This is a, is a special code. This is a special keyword from Boyam. You can do it through a .NET snippet. I won't show that here, but luckily if you're on a high enough version, you just use this code. 
Then I'm gonna set store six equal to store two minus one because it's going to give you the whole count of all of the rows that are available, including the blank fourth row. So this is where, you know, you can look on the line loop, it'll say ignore last line. And um, that's basically what I'm doing there. So I have put kind of uh, comments here, total rows. And this is for SQL, my system is SQL. So there's only a little bit of adaptation you have to do to change it. So I'll comment on that there. So the first thing that you can do is you always wanna validate what your users are gonna do. So if you had this, if the column is editable, this is a nice little key, special keyword from Boyam where it'll check if 38 matrix and then the without quantity posting column is editable. If it's yes, it will continue to do what it's doing. If not, it'll give you this warning. So I'll show you an example. Okay, so say your user went to use this and they had the without quantity posting off. <clears throat> they went to push this button. See down at the bottom, it says without quantity posting column not visible and active. So super nice because you will actually get an error when you're working with the UI API where it will, it will basically crash that macro if you try to run that the way I'm gonna do it. Cause it's try, gonna, going to try and affect a field that's not visible and active to edit. Okay, so let's go, we'll set it back here. So now it's editable and active. So it's active and editable. If it wasn't, if it was visible but not editable, it would also give you an error. Oh, sorry, we'll give you the, the clean warning and it won't crash. So as much as possible, you wanna handle these. So you can always do if and check for, you could check individually if the specific um, columns are active, if you require specific ones to write to. And this is a really good way to make it nice and clean for your customer. You can check also, you know, you could go so far as to check if the customer is blank as well. So you could say, oh, customer is blank. And um, so it won't run it. And then you can do validation. There's so many validations you can do. Um, if you look at the V1 validation configuration, I've made it only run on add because when it's in okay mode or fine mode, it won't. we won't do anything. It's only when you're adding the credit memo that it should run. So the only other thing I could think of if I'm thinking like how could a user break this system is, is customer could be blank and then it just won't do anything. It'll probably do the loop, but it's just, you could, you could put a prompt, hey, put a customer first. There's no way you even have lines yet, okay? Okay. Okay, so this is checking. So then you can see be, uh, begin and the end here. Okay, so it's either gonna say if it's editable, yes, run the middle stuff. If not, begin and just say without quantity posting active. I like to put what universal function that I'm outputting the error from or the warning in this case. And that way, if I see a screenshot or I run it myself, I can easily track down which, uh, which universal function was doing the error or doing the function. So that's a nice best practice there. I also put ORIN, if this is only for an a credit memo, I put that because I know that's the table. If I if it's for any marketing document, I usually just do OXXX, but I'll leave this for ORIN. So if I ever look at a list of universal functions, I roughly know where it is. Just a little best practice. Okay, so now we go on to the while loop. So this assuming it's true, that it is editable. Now we go to begin. So between here and here, it's gonna do its thing. So we're gonna freeze the form, which is very, nice and clean for when the user is going to see it. I'll show you how that works. Um, basically it freezes the maneuvering around of the mouse and all that in the user interface when you're on a single form. So it appears when they click it like it was one function. So it goes click, in the background does its work, and then at the end I unfreeze it so that when I unfreeze it, it just looks like you pushed a button and the function that you did actually did the work. You don't watch like the cursor moving around, which is kind of pedestrian and unprofessional. And it's nice to just have a kind of, you know, you know, you know, picky, 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 picky. Why not be picky? Okay. So here's the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. So it's a while loop. So it's like, it's a conditional dynamic syntax type, like if statements, but this basically will loop this as long as this resolves to true. 
Okay, so that's it. This is the whole thing. So you could do a whole bunch of other things here. Like <clears throat> if you look at the universal function, you can do, if you look at the line loop universal function, you can do this. You could do a whole bunch of different things, affect different fields, and then go into your loop. You could do conditional loops. You could do, so, you could combine 50 different line loops into one giant chunk of code in this macro. You could do a whole bunch of different conditional things, print stuff, do all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Like with one single macro, you can count, you could do, all the counts and manipulations and things you want. This is the most flexible way to do it. Just stop using line loops. I don't use them anymore. So we're basically just going to check while at one, which starts at one, again, I'm going top down, is less than or equal to at store six, keep going, okay? So it's less than uh, 30, well, in this case, it's gonna be three, so it'll go one, two, three. Duh. Okay, so begin. So we're gonna store three, which is another placeholder. We are going to store the item code from that row. So you can see I've even taken the specific row that I'm on and used it as dynamic syntax in order to pull that data. Okay, so this will pull the first item code, store four, uses an SQL function to store select inventory item from OITM where the item equals that particular line's code. So I'm saying, is this an inventory item? And then I literally just store that specific yes or no value because it, in this case, it's very straightforward. If it's yes, we want it to set it to quantity posting. If it's no, we don't. So I'm just literally using the raw yes or no from here. You can use a case statement in here to transform this. You can, you could have a toggle on here. You could have a, a parameter, just say mark them all, unmark them all, anything that you want to do through here. Okay. So that uses that particular row. Then we'll have store five. This is going to create the syntax for the set of the next field into a column. So you say, why don't you just use this? Because doing this reads that column. So if I did that, I don't wanna read it and set it, set store five to yes or no, based on whatever the value already is. I wanna make this into a string so I can use it later in my set operation, okay? So this reads it. If you just wanna read it, you could do very simple syntax, but if you wanna make this to be manipulated later, so this would be 38.125.0021.21.0.1, which says specifically row one, and then it'll go specifically row one, specifically row two, specifically row three, etc. So you'll do that. And then I do a status bar, just for fun, processing row, the row I'm on, and then the total number of rows that we have. And then I'll just do it as a warning. So this just tells the user that it's functioning and it's going, it doesn't just freeze for, you know, especially if there's like 600 rows, it'll count up to rows. Oh, another little tip, uh, unrelated kind of sort of to this, but if you do a line loop and you're deleting rows, a trick is to go from bottom up. I've had this question a couple times. If you do deletes of rows and you go top down, it shifts your, your references by the rows that are going there and it'll never work. It won't work properly. If you're going to delete rows, you have to go up from the bottom because it'll go up, 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 delete, up, 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 delete, up, 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 delete, where it won't go top, 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 delete, shift. Top, top, shift, 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 top, shift, 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 top, top, shift, 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 shift. It doesn't work, right? So it's a tiny little piece of advice. If you, if you take any, anything away from this video, you can do that even with the regular line loop. So where were we at? Okay, status bar, you'll see that. Okay, now we're doing the meat and potatoes here. You could, Again, you could do another while loop, another if loop. You can run, do anything you want here, go crazy, write to a table, like go nuts. Um, <clears throat> set at store five, which is, so we're gonna set the specific row with that to the value that we got in store four. So that would be a yes if it's an inventory item or a no if it's not. And then we're gonna say, now take store one, 
equal to store one plus one. So we're just gonna go to the next row. It hits the end, then it goes reevaluate. So now we're at two is less than three, does it, goes down to the bottom. Two plus one is three. Three is less than or equal to, it does three, then it goes three plus one. Four is less than or equal to three, false, exits the loop, unfreezes, and then does the little status bar message, set all rows as without quantity posting. Zing, 163, 163, and a success. Okay, so let's go and look at that. I'll just minimize this, minimize this. So it's very straightforward. Bing, one, two, three. And you can see it did it automatically. So very, very straightforward, system message, one, two, three, and then quantity posting. So that's it, you can uncheck this, very satisfying. So you can see, it's going, whoop, and then they just all appear at once. So that's the benefit of the freeze and all that stuff. So remember, I'll post that code in the video description below. It's for SQL, but you pretty much just need a couple of quotation marks to convert it to HANA. And if you have any issues, post in the comments below. Add me on linkedin.battleshipcobra.com. That linkedin.battleshipcobra.com just goes straight to my LinkedIn profile page. You can try to find me on LinkedIn. I don't know where to do that. You can go to battleshipcobra.com, which is my website. Again, I don't wanna beg here, but uh, if you could get one person to do $1 super thanks, I will make another video for you within a week, okay? So it's not about money, it's about prioritizing time. I have kids too. I, I really love making videos, but at the same time, um, you know, just just something, something back is nice and uh, maybe I'll get in the groove of things and do that again. Really appreciate it. Again, send me a message on LinkedIn. Thank you for all the people who have sent me messages on LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me. I love when you connect with me. Ask me generic questions. I'm not gonna troubleshoot your printers, guys. I'm not. I'm not troubleshooting your printers. I'm not troubleshooting your integration framework. I will answer questions, anything you want. SAP related, what my approach is, how to do X, Y, and Z, et cetera, et cetera. You know how I do. Thank you guys. Check out my other videos, subscribe, like the video, and peace out for now. Bye-bye. They don't want to see me make it. They don't want to see me care. Anytime I make some progress, I can see that they compare. I think everyone's against me, maybe.